Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. We're all equal. I don't know, I feel like I need to press this point right now. We're all equal. Nobody in here is better than anybody else. Oh, some may be behaving better. Some may be a little further along spiritually. You might have your prayer life a little more perfected. We're all growing. We're all coming along. And God is not mad if we've not arrived. He's just happy that you're here today wanting to learn more. Why does God use people that just, <laughs> apart from him, couldn't do anything? Well, let's go look at it. 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians 1, 24. But to those who are called, whether Jew or Greek, Gentile, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So... Christ is our power. Christ is our wisdom. That is because the foolish thing that has its source in God is wiser than men, and the weak thing that springs from God is stronger than men. So a person who is full of God might not have a proper education, but they've got wisdom, and that will always trump having head knowledge. Now, it's good to have the head knowledge, but if you can't have both, go with God. Amen. For simply consider your own call, brethren. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimates and standards. Not many influential and powerful. Not many of high and noble birth. And he's, you know, all you got to do is think about the people that Jesus chose, and it wasn't an accident. He prayed all night to get those 12 goofy guys. I mean, you look at them and think, really? <laughs> no, for God selected. I love this in the Amplified. Deliberately chose <laughs> what in the world is foolish to put the wise to shame and what the world calls weak to put the strong to shame. And God also selected, deliberately chose What in the world is lowborn and insignificant and branded and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing that he might depose and bring to nothing the things that are, so that no mortal man should have pretense for glorying and boast in the presence of God. Wow. Everybody say nice and loud, God deliberately chose me. God deliberately chose me. Wow. And here's the amazing thing. God knew every mistake that we were ever going to make, and he still chose us. Jesus knew that Peter was going to deny him before he called Peter. He knew that Judas was going to sell him out before he called Judas. He knew that the disciples were going to, while he's trying to explain to them that it's time for him to die and go to the cross, that they're going to be on the road arguing about which of them was the greatest. Goofy, goofy people, carnal, fleshly, goofy people. And yet, yet, born again men, after the death and resurrection of Christ, Peter, who was a coward a day after being filled with the Holy Spirit, after receiving the Holy Spirit and being born again, he preached in the middle of the streets the boldest message you've ever heard, and 3,000 people were saved. It doesn't matter what you were. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away and all things become brand new. So here's the thing. Look at me. Let me tell you something. There's no differences in any of us. We're all equal here today. It doesn't matter that I'm up here and you're out there. That doesn't mean anything to God. I'm up here because he's gifted me to be up here. It wouldn't do me much good to be here if you weren't there listening, so I'm glad I got some learners. <laughs> Amen. People ask all the time, you know, well, has it been hard for Dave for you to be the one up in front of the people all the time and him just to kind of be in the background? Dave has got it good. 
You don't have to worry about Dave. But you know what happened in the very beginning? It was a little bit tough for him. But you know what God told him? If you do what I've given you the grace to do, you'll always have joy. But if you try to do what I've graced somebody else to do, then you'll have nothing but misery. You see, he can only do what he does because he knows who he is. I said he can only do what he does because he knows who he is. And if you know who you are, then it won't matter so much what you do. Don't ever say, well, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. Oh. My gosh, mothers work so hard. Oh, man, come on, let's give it up for all the moms. Amen. Woo. And for any man to mistreat a woman just because she's a woman is the height of stupidity. You wouldn't even be her without her. You don't get into the planet without a woman. Amen? Amen? We're all equal. I don't know, I feel like I need to press this point right now. We're all equal. Nobody in here is better than anybody else. Oh, some may be behaving better. Some may be a little further along spiritually. You might have your prayer life a little more perfected. We're all growing. We're all coming along. And God is not mad if we've not arrived. He's just happy that you're here today wanting to learn more. The Lord looks on the heart. Amen. Keep your heart right. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Right. Amen? Amen? If you keep your heart right, you're always going to be okay with God. 1 Samuel 16. You guys doing okay? Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you. You know, getting a reputation and then trying to keep it is hard work. Man, I remember how hard I worked at a church that I was in once trying to be in the right group. And when God touched my life and called me to preach, that group was the first to reject me. No wonder the Bible says that Jesus made himself of no reputation. <laughs> he had to get that over with first. We all want to be well thought of, but to be free, you have to be you. 1 Samuel 16, verse 1, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. So Saul had messed up, got into pride, did his own thing. And God even said to him at one point, when you were small in your own sight, did I not call you? See, he was a man that when he was small in his own sight, God lifted him up. But then he thought he was too important to have to obey God. And so God brought him down. We see the same thing happened to Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel. He started out in chapter 1, Everything was God. Everything is God. God's done this. God's done that. God, God, God. And it only took him about 12 verses, and he built a monument to himself. <laughs> well, he came down too. So Saul, because of pride, was going to lose 
the right to be king. And God was sending the prophet Samuel to anoint a new king. And he said, you're going to go to the house of Jesse. Jesse had a whole bunch of sons. And so he starts out. And when they had all come before him, verse 6, so now all the sons are lined up. He looked on Eliab, the eldest, and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. <laughs> but the Lord said to Samuel, look not on the appearance or at the height of his stature, for I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees, for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. But Samuel said, neither has the Lord chosen that one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass before Samuel. No, the Lord has not chosen him. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. And then he said to Jesse, are these all your sons? And Jesse said, well, there is still one, the youngest, and he's out tending the sheep. Well, how would you like to be the one that nobody even thought enough of you to even bring you in to be considered. Come on. Some of you maybe felt like the tail end in your family. You weren't as talented as your sister. Or you weren't a great sports star like your brother. Or not quite as well. Why can't you get the grades your sister gets? Well, because I ain't my sister. <laughs> of course, we don't get to say that at that age, but one of the worst things that you can ever do as a parent is compare one child to another one. Don't ever do that. Why can't you be like? You say, you be like yourself. You do the best you can do. So David was the one that was anointed to be king because while he's out taking care of the stinky, smelly, stupid sheep, why does God compare us to sheep? Because they're stubborn. Amen? They need a shepherd. So David was shepherding the sheep, and he's out there building a relationship with God. He's out there writing all these songs, writing all the psalms, and you know. And God didn't want somebody that looked right or had the right this or the right that or the right something else. When he wanted a king, he wanted somebody that was connected heart to heart. He wanted somebody that knew him, somebody that loved him. And you know what? It's sad to have to say this, but there's so many people that go to church that don't know God. And it, it's sad for them. They're doing the best they can, but there's nothing worse than somebody wanting to have a relationship with God, going and being told, now, join the church, and these are the rules that you need to follow to be part of this organization, and never telling them about relationship and that God loves them. And more than anything, he wants to have a relationship with them. You don't have to pray, you get to pray. You don't have to read the word, you get to see what God says about your life. It's a privilege. Prayer is nothing more than just talking to God. Let's learn how to be in everything nothing. Everything in Christ and nothing in ourselves. Everything in Christ. I believe that I can do whatever I need to do. I'm a confident woman. I'm bold. And I believe that I can do whatever I need to do. But I hang on that vine. Oh, you know, God sometimes will take the trouble to put you in your place if you need to be put in your place. He, uh, he says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in due time you might be exalted. But I can tell you, if you don't humble yourself, he'll do it for you. <laughs> for we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about the affliction and the oppressing distress which befell us in the province of Asia, how we were so utterly and unbearably weighed down and crushed that we despaired even of life itself. Indeed, we felt within ourselves that we had received the very sentence of death, but that was to keep us from trusting in and depending on ourselves instead of on God who raises the dead. So, out of
have love and concern for Paul's future, he actually let him and some of the other disciples go through a much more difficult time than what they would have liked to have gone through because he wanted, it was very important that God keep them aware that they had to depend on God and nobody else. You're not getting that, I don't think. Why doesn't God sometimes deliver us the moment we want to be delivered? Why does he let us go on and struggle when he could deliver us right now? Because he wants us to realize that apart from him, we can do nothing. And he wants us to want him more than we want to get what we want. 2 Corinthians 12, 7, And to keep me from being puffed up and too much elated by the exceeding greatness of the revelations that I was being given, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, <laughs> a messenger of Satan to rack and buffet and harass me to keep me from being excessively exalted. Amen. You know, you can get, a thorn in the flesh can be a lot of different things. I get letters from people sometimes that are thorns in my flesh. Here's one of the most recent. The woman who's over our media ministry sat down with me and she said, Joyce, we're starting to get letters again because this wasn't the first time that when you have guests on your program to interview them, you need to let them talk. Well, you know what? Four or five years ago, the first time they brought that to me, I got so defensive. And I had thoughts like, well, this is my program, and I'll say what I want to. <laughs> they ought to be glad to even be on you. <laughs> Who do these people are? <laughs> Come on, that's when you know you got a problem. When you cannot receive any kind of direction or correction without getting defensive and angry. No, you don't like that? The first thing that we do when somebody tries to correct us is immediately tell them what's wrong with them. Yeah, well, you don't do everything so right yourself. Well, this time, when she came, hmm, I said, you know what? I'm just not very good at this interview and stuff. I said, baby, you're going to have to stand back behind the camera, and if I'm talking too much, go. Because <laughs> you know what? I'm a teacher, and I want to teach. And if you ain't saying what I think the people need to hear, then I'm likely to take over. <laughs> I admit it. I admit it. You know, the first time I tried to be on television was like years before God put me on. And uh, I decided I was going to have an interview program, and I took four or five of my employees, and we read at a little station at a cable station in St. Louis, and, and uh, we were going to have this interview show where I was going to ask them questions, and they were going to answer them. But the problem was, honestly and truly, they were just decoration. Because I would ask one of them a question, and then I would answer it before they would ever get a chance to answer it. And so I had these people on there, and I was the only one saying anything. Well, in six months, we got one piece of mail. Come on, it's good for you to hear this part. In six months, we got one piece of mail. So I decided, it, you know, that wasn't my strong suit. So, I, you know, I have some guests on my program, but I don't have as many as I used to because I'm just not... That's just not, I'm not the best at that. I'm learning and I can do it, but if you just cut me loose and tell me to talk, I'm in with that. I can do that. <laughs> but see, it doesn't bother me at all to stand here and tell you, I, you know, I can do that, but it's not my strongest gift. Well, see, God uses things like that. Okay, you've got a lot of stuff you can do, but there's some things you can't do. And you know what? It's not, now listen to what I'm going to say. It is not good for anybody to be able to do it all. Amen. 
You know what? Some of us are good at giving, but we don't want to have to feel that we need anybody. Did you hear me? We work ourselves to death when there's people around us that could help, but we won't ask them for help. Or even if we do ask, we won't let them do it their way. They've got to do it our way. Because after all, nobody can do it as good as I can. Okay. You guys look like you need some caffeine or something. I don't know. But you know what? In the midst of all of this, God loves you so much. Thank God he won't ever leave us alone. Thank God he cares enough about us to show us. And it's not just you, it's all of us. We all go through this kind of stuff. But the people who succeed are the ones who let God cut it out of them. Come on. It's up to you today. Do you want to go on with God and be all that you've told him you want to be? If you want to come up higher, something else has got to go down lower. But we want to come up higher, a little bit more of our flesh has to go down lower. So in closing, let me say, <laughs> Philippians 4.13. Oh, we've had so much fun today. Oh, you just wait till tonight. Only brave people better come tonight. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. And I love this. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. So I can even say I am self-confident in Christ's confidence. Only because he lives in me can I do anything. Apart from him, I can do Look at how bad it's already looking. Look at that. Just see, it's already looking. It's already starting to close up. You just wait till tomorrow. And that'll only be 24 hours off the vine. How long have you been off? Well, I often say that self-confidence is the belief that you can do a thing. But we also have to realize that God's Word says, apart from Him, we can do nothing, but that we can do all things through Him. So yes, we can do it, but we can only do it through Him and through continually receiving His strength. So we really don't need more self-confidence. What we really need is more God-confidence. Today, we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayer Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they've been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite long, but they never go to medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And you know. This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, you are, we are you making us to go every corner looking 
every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek. Van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's, tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl partner.